Welcome everyone to another episode of breaking news here in literally breaking stuff in the IT world as usual. This week starting with the latest and greatest Apple, obviously Apple of all the sandboxed and developer harassments, you guessed it. Couple of security vulnerabilities later and you have webcam access here apparently according to this blog post. And as you see from this, which probably you want to read in a quiet minute there at home, this post a technical walkthrough of how to, they discovered several zeros, not one, but several zero day bugs in Safari, recurring theme here of years of development at Apple, Microsoft, Google and stuff, and still not one or two, but several security vulnerabilities in 2020 just in case you were wondering how secure is all this stuff. So this post is rather long and um, background the goal of this project is to hack iOS and macOS webcam. All the other vulnerabilities uncovering during the hunt are just bonus bugs, which yeah, you're looking for one bug and you found, found, find a dozen. And also of course, due to the security model, how to bypass this, but you see this day and age even that is still possible so much to, yeah, this is all the App Store development harassment of we can't ship our app how we want, but Apple has a couple of dozens of, yeah. Um, this blog post is uh, rather long here, keeping track of websites, security details, usual suspects, JavaScript, obviously, uh, file to the rescue, um, bonus bug auto downloads, which yeah, sandbox downloads and quarantine downloads, but yeah, auto downloads. Also, yeah, this is so hilarious that on macOS, I really hate this, that, that I need to give each website, each website permission. I want to download a file and the stupid Safari, my opinion, super stupid that it asks, do you want to allow this website to download something? Like, no, I don't want to allow each website. I just want to download the file I clicked on. So basically, uh, anyway wonder if you can disable this, not really well. Also 2020, just downloading a file is already insecure. Um, maybe you shouldn't auto execute it, but anyway, block wiredness. So again, not really going into this detail because otherwise um, this would not be a 30 minute show, but a 30 hour show. You probably are encouraged to read all of this. So some blob Skype com, um, also world your yeah, security context without TLS. Let's look closely to the security context and then eventually, uh, long story short here, tying it all together, um, open an evil HTTP website, becomes a data URI, data becomes a blob URI, manipulate window history in two parts, create an about blank iframe and document write to it, Dyn dynamically give this iframe sandbox attribute, attempt impossible frame navigation using X-frame options, from within the iframe window open, a new pop-up and document write to it profit. And here apparently, allegedly, screen recording of this attack looked like into the wild in case you wondered. Leave me in the comments below what you think, of course. Also recurring theme, how many, I mentioned this before, how complex security is with all the gazillion standards, but also with all the security models. Um, we try to mitigate some security vulnerabilities and at the end uh, you find still nine or so, uh, is it nine or eight or something of that sort and still profit. In similar news in Apple land and hashtag peak bugs, uh, aka peak bugs, I didn't even check audio, but anyway, let's hope audio is fine. And uh, if you are live, live watching and find the audio stuttering because pulls audio peak bugs then please let me know. In recurring peak bugs news here on Apple's side, kernel panic in Catalina, 10.15.4, um, maybe not necessarily related to the Thunder Bay raid. They write here, anyone keeps kernel panics in macOS 10.15.4, also 2020 in the fourth, not, not zero, not first, not second, but fourth bug fix release uh, spin dot four. Um, also, I wonder, they are, they are super large, right? All this, I think probably dot one was two or three or four gigabytes, something enormously large. Only 0.4 was no smaller, maybe below two gigabyte, which, yeah, we have 500 Mbit if we sometimes get them here. This 
company business docs is cable stuff but if you are traveling if you're in a hotel or in general it's also somewhat insane how large um, this all operating system updates of touching everything or maybe just strangely done i don't know anyway so yeah apple ahci in case you were wondering of course standard serial ata good old-fashioned interface certainly because macs are pc in case you have not realized just just normal pcs with an please don't steal a hardware password there in the system management controller but yeah this stuff is crashing why we are recurring calling out not only bugs and peak bugs and security vulnerabilities but also talk about not using C and not using a monolithic kernel which macOS is for the most part a little bit hybrid but still everything in one address space but yeah 2020 your external RAID and closer uh, crashes here somehow and apparently they are here they wrote they are in contact with Apple and uh, yeah this bug software to support um, they write here hope this is legit but anyway, in case not, then complain to a soft rate. But certainly with all the peak bugs I personally see on macOS, uh, wouldn't surprise me. They are working with Apple engineers to help to fix uh, this or find a workaround. Also, 2020, I said this before, with all the notarization and stuff, you can soon, or you are not only not encouraged, but soon I got an email. We have a um, security certificate for kernel extensions for macOS because we're professionals. But I got a note that it's deprecated, phasing out, not really sure, probably sometime soon, if, if not now. Uh, honestly, we're not using it much anymore, but yeah, 2020, you can't even write drivers for your monolithic binary only sort of professional um, kernel. So yeah, also this bug was introduced in 10.15.4 because it is what bug fix releases are for, right? Speaking about bug fix releases, Intel has some new assisted snooping L1 data sampling. Uh, vulnerabilities. This was already disclosed here. That although that note that this is different from L1D eviction sampling CV2020. So um, let's see. Do we have here even some? Uh, maybe this is a domain bypass transient execution attack variant known as Snoop Assistant L1 data sampling has been assigned 2020-0550 with a CVS S of 5.6 medium. Under complex conditions involving a cache currency snoop to modify cache line, malicious advisory may be able to infer data value of some modified cache line in the L1 data, um, L1 data, L1D cache using snoop assistant L1. So yeah, recurring theme of raise your hand if you are surprised. We had this already with, um, for a long time with all the Intel security. Um, bugs and mitigations. So uh, this is coming to the Linux kernel next to you here from Amazon fame. So most likely this has some real world impact here, for example, for virtualized co-hosted and uh, similar environments. So L1D flushing, um, uh, increasing number of vulnerabilities being reported. So yeah, not, not one, not two, but an increasing number of, say, come free and or cheap in a dozen or something. Around data leaks from L1D, level one cache of previous videos in our own RISC V core and FPGA stuff. So of course the caches are to uh, cache a, a, as in temporarily store data to speed up access to the random access memory, which still is relatively slow in terms of processing power. And as seen with previous security vulnerabilities on Intel side, Spectrum meltdown down in all the variants of that uh, that it's apparently possible to um, infer data here also from the L1 cache so with some most likely quite bit pattern hammering similar to a raw hammer of RAM vulnerability um, yeah eviction sampling there um, and inferring even without Snoop and yeah. So this stuff is coming and also what does it mean? In practice this means uh, CPUs and cache infrastructure prone to this vulnerability um, might require, if you want to run this top-notch secure, might require excessive L1 flushing, meaning that between context switches, say you switch from application one like 
uh, virtualized container of customer A to virtualized container of customer B or a Firefox JavaScript from one website to the other. Maybe you are attacked through some JavaScript on some malicious website. So with all the context switching of flushing the L1 data cache to keep them safe from any yet to be discovered vulnerability <laughs> related to leaks from the L1 cache. So <clears throat> yeah, um, x86 only at the moment. And um, yeah, so of course this comes with, as usual, with a hefty performance impact because obviously the cache is there to cache stuff and if you flush it between all the context switching then of course you most likely often flush out some data and invalidate it that otherwise would have speed up your application and virtual machines. Speaking of similar stuff, uh, this time in the real hardware world, uh, you... Uh, is this is just an article you was hunting uh, hunting burglaries with drones but what i found most noteworthy here is that they had here a nice uh, drone black hornet um, 17 centimeters long and uh, 12 centimeter rotor and uh, purchased from the u.s company fleur nano drone for military use also the german military apparently uh, has those and um, also purchased through the eu product spectra uh, for the national french national police and stuff um, in case you were wondering i think i forgot actually to uh, there was a nice video that i might have forgot i had it open the day i saved the link but there is some nice PR video that would be at video of the vendor and um, there would be probably something of that sort. Do we have media audio of maybe if this has, but that doesn't really matter too much. Not really sure how my video doesn't look like audio for some reason though, but you certainly can watch that at home but here are some scenes of that while well, I check if we can assign desktop audio why is this not connected or not available that makes me wonder how the audio is in general why is the desktop audio why what would default be Works so, um, works. Whatever it is not named default. Um, yes, yeah, some not, not really wanting to, but here are some, as you see, some allegedly apparently um, advertising real world shots. In case you were wondering uh, what previously imagined in some Hollywood movie nowadays um, is a real thing here somewhere, maybe. And uh, not an paid advertisement for this stuff, just some awareness that this kind of stuff is a real thing, not only used by the US, but European, France, Germany, certainly every, every state around the world, just a little bit of hardware security in case you wondered. Speaking of hardware security, maybe we move this. Uh, ah, right, this is the next EASA. European Union Aviation Safety Agency. Tiny little shout out of recurring theme with Boeing and others. Um, I think the Dreamliner also, which is this, or is this a, this is a Dreamliner? Um, I think we had this already previously with some other airplane. I forgot which one it is, but here is a new bulletin here, published effective date, um, issue date here just now. Uh, Boeing 787, not that they would fly right now anyway, but um, alerted here information identifying yada yada whatever actually so the, the sad thing is that this does probably not at all issue a summary right it's a little bit um, for that you need to click on this but this what this is is integer overflow so have you switched off and turned on your airplane again now down this doesn't load in the browser darn um but i also wonder why does firefox not always do this when i actually want to open it in the browser that is somewhat hilarious but uh, if you open this pdf which uh, i don't want to save now is um overflowing after 55 days or something of that sort so some typical 
32 bit integer resolution after 55 days or something of that sort. So, yeah, um, airplane security, uh, stability, and engineering in 2020. Speaking about engineering in 2020 and in this analog virus times with people working from home, Zoom, Zoom isn't actually end to end encrypted can still access your video meetings so much too. Also, yeah, false advertising, right? They write there on the website allegedly and on the security white paper that it suppo supports end-to-end -end encryption for its meetings, but new research from The Intercept reveals that it's not exactly true. Actually, why did I link the Verge then if this is original research from The Intercept? Um, are we still online? We are online, just not loading. Anyway, um, The Intercept asked the Zoom spokesperson whether videos, also if you have it, aren't into encryption, probably I should actually link to that. So, um, yeah, so much to allegedly they meant like not, it's not that kind of end-to-end -end, um, uh, encryption. So, yeah, per meeting security capabilities that are available, um, but reach to command. So that was when the host starts a meeting, uh, setting enabled participate, um, Zoom is using, but when you reach to comment whether the video meetings are actually enter encrypted, Zoom spokesperson wrote, currently it is not possible to enable enter -end encryption for Zoom video meetings. Um, Zoom video meetings use a combination of TCP, UDP, TCP connections are made using TLS, UDP connections are encrypted with AES using key negotiation over the TLS connection. Um, long story short, apparently it's um, not end to end encrypted according to um, ah, yeah, the, the Zoom service itself might have access to the encrypted meeting content but wouldn't have the encryption key required to decrypt only. The meeting participants. Um, this is how end encrypt goes, uh, whatever. So yeah. Um, Matthew Green, a cryptographer and computer science professor at so John Hopkins University points out that group video conferencing is difficult to encrypt end to end. That's because the service provider needs to de uh, detect who is talking to act like a switchboard which allows it only send a high resolution video stream from the person who is talking at the moment or who user, uh, whatever. Um, it's a little bit fuzzy about what end-to-end -end encryption means. Uh, they said things they're doing slightly dishonest way. Um, but yeah, also attackers can use Zoom to steal users Windows credentials with no warning. Apparently the whole thing, we had this in previous videos, the macOS installation is a little bit near, a little bit root kitty and um, uh, enabling some. Also installing in the pre-flying, right? It's also here, um, strange software distribution in 2020. Um, so there was apparently some UNC bug, so that um, spokesperson, sp spokesperson later said, that the UNC bug and a separate pair of bugs disclosed by the researcher have been fixed, the video conferencing company also said. Um, so what was the issue? The issue was that attacker, <coughs> attackers work by using Zoom chat window to send targets a text string that represents the network location on a Windows device. They are using the Zoom app for Windows automatically converts a so-called universal naming convention string such as backslash backslash attacker example com slash c dollar into a click of links in the event that uh, the target clicks on those links on the network they aren't fully locked down zoom will send the windows windows username and the corresponding net ntlm version 2 hashes to the address contained in the link so <clears throat> yeah amazing integration if you were wondering also maybe don't simply integrate all the things uh, that much and um, make if if it would be just text stuff without auto converting links uh, half of the bugs would also not happen already but yeah uh, recurring theme here security is difficult with all the details and interconnected stuff and usability and so on speaking about security and stuff mozilla foundation security advisory 2020 fixed in firefox 7401 and esr 6861 
announced April the third critical already use in uh, allegedly I think they said already used in the wild exploited in the wild so also recurring theme here use after free while running the NS doc shell destructor a recurring theme here why I recommend on this and the other channel not to use C languages also probably C++ but yeah why we need to architecture software way more uh, fundamentally more secure and certainly not with use after free um, yeah also not not one but um, use after free uh, probably best come in pairs just like androids or something of that sort under certain conditions when handling readable stream arrays condition can cause a use after free um, and they are aware of targeted attacks in the wild abusing this flaw <clears throat> too much to probably want to update your firefox and not use the C language of languages. In similar news, open WRT code execution bug puts millions of devices at risk. I'm surprised they have not updated the headlock, uh, the, the um, headline, because it's not really code execution per se. It's, um, in my opinion, it's partially a little bit exaggerated, but certainly shows that not simply using open source does not fix all bugs miraculously for almost three years and nobody has noticed open wt open source operating systems that powers home routers and other typical embedded systems has a vulnerability in uh, to remote code execution text because updates were delivered over an unencrypted channel and di di digital signature verification are easy to bypass so um, unencrypted channel is not the most dangerous um, probably as they say like they have done it because not all environments allow uh, secure HTTPS connections which I find a little bit bullshit to be honest but um, updates over an HTTP of course not the most insecure however the big issue the, the real issue is here that um, the signature verification can be um, bypassed by simply having a space there or something so this was so of course so this is update download package list from mirrors i think proof of concept code uh, i don't know whatever something and so the issue here is that um, it's not checking um or it's it's it has a signature but the signature verification can be easily defeated by having a space or something so instead of like the hash like starting with a where was this even? Um, by adding a space, so whoever the found that here's this char turn fifty. Also, yeah, re, um, shout out. If you implement signature checking, maybe test it and also <laughs> not make uh, such um, travel parsing bugs. In the input string of checksum underscore hex to bin function, by adding a space to the beginning of the input string. They said the bug appears to have been introduced in February 2017. Um, so yeah, not, not amazing hash checking. But of course, for this still, you need to be men in the middle, right? So however, this might not be the most difficult if you are either close to the infrastructure or um, root the somewhere. So yeah. Um, do not blindly trust open source um, and maybe contribute um, read read the stuff what we do here on this channel and spread the world and um, yeah open source of course per se and is not more secure it needs to still be checked and validated but of course the difference is it is easier to check and validate and maybe you play along at home and help with the stuff and um, yeah even if it's a big and famous projects that can still be a three-year-old bug looking there and some simple space hash validation stuff. In similar news, what we had already previously, we had already previously data leaked again and again and even more. As this time, Votalist in huge data breach was compiled by Labour Party. Also, um, European data um, European Data General Data Protection Act and then political parties like political parties like regulate data collection stuff and then they themselves collect all the data and of course um, political 
data security um, usually not the very best. So massive cache of data leaked online is understood to have organized from the Labour Party in Malta, I think. Um, IT companies labor links uh, database with internal list of voters which the party had codenamed local area network. Um, alongside this information taken, confident electoral register, the list includes a field entries either one or two. Beside each voter entry indicates that the voter is considered a labor supporter, while two indicates the voter is inclined towards the nationalist party. Um, if you ever wanted all your data there in the wild. Oh, they were using MySQL. Um, yeah, probably in the meantime, if you collected each of the data leak, you have already data from each person in the world, which is also a recurring theme why we need to update um, bump here our IT security and infrastructure because this is a little bit much in similar news. Marriott discloses a new data breach. Also, yeah, not the first, but a new data breach impacting 5.2 million guests because what is better than leaking it once, certainly leaking it twice. So Hotel Group is sending an email to guests affected by the breach, allegedly, maybe. Uh, said on Tuesday that names, mailing addresses, loyalty, uh, loyalty, account numbers and other personal information estimated 5.2 million guests have been exposed in the data breach again. That is the second major security in in incident uh, hits the Hotel Group in less than two years and uh, unexpected amount of guest information may have been accessed in the end of February using the login credentials of two employees at a franchise property. Awesome. Yeah, maybe not franchise uh, log in all the data and stuff. And yeah, leave in the comments below what you think, how we can improve this. Certainly microkernel is not one thing or the C languages, of course, also the setup. If the setup and login infrastructure is inherently insecure, then uh, the use of Rust in the microkernel doesn't help you anything. But um, yes, yeah, certainly, of course, there's also usability. Having all the data at the fingertip is, of course, convenient. But if each of your franchise partners can log in and dump it, then certainly that is a little bit <clears throat> insecure. Also wonder why, but certainly of all of the things, I would say 90 over 90% of the data does not need to be connected, collected in the first place. Certainly, I, this is probably also a misunderstanding that companies think they need so much data when in reality they don't need this. For what are they using this? Certainly for not too many good things. So probably they, they barely made an extra dime with all this data, and yet they lost it twice. Um, in, yeah. in similar news here of German analog virus stuff, this CT magazine here with some security expert or something took a look at the German T-Mobile COVID-19 analog revolt virus tracing app and found grave security uh, issues, apparently to scan some QR code with some patient ID and stuff. And the, app, the usual simple ideas of like tracing and connecting and notifying this stuff but um, yeah, the data is, is um, encrypted, but with a um, check, does not check the SL certificate. So yeah, it's, it's encrypted with, yeah, encrypted with your own and it, the app will still accept it. So this allows, of course, as you probably know, if you don't check the, if you don't pin the certificate, meaning AKA actually checking it, that it's um, the issuer that you expect, the, the, the source then you can easily man in the middle. So yeah, recurring shout or just encrypting it does not protect you from man in the middle. If you do not pin the certificate and check that it's actually you who you're trust, um, trusting the data with. Um, so you can spoof it. You can also inject false data. Um, the further, um, I think this was even some old certificate or something. Um, when, yeah, something, whatever, um, I think the certificate was even old. Um, I yeah, right, this was also old crypto. So the certificate was already from 2015. So, uh, top notch security, five top notch state of the art, only five years and expired, uh, five years. Um, and it was apparently <laughs> expired. Um, and um, yeah, 
expired not not expired recently it was already freaking expired for five years so um yeah when internet service provider and, and other it professionals <coughs> not try to make an app um, tls ssl configuration of the server also was outdated I still accepted rc4 encryption and if all of you in the audience probably know this rc4 is already broken for decades um, it's it's a crypto from the 90s proprietary crypto that long um, state of the art in the 90s proprietary and a long broken and, and stuff and um, yeah this server configuration so old old but yeah T-Mobile and, and associated companies what you're expecting five years expired and so old that using ARC4 RC4 and modern cryptography uh, like TLS 1.2 was not available it's like yeah seriously I mean if if you can break something then sure um, of course they always blame it to one developer yes we excuse what well, it's a one developer mistake yeah of course never the management or whatever maybe school your one developer better or um, have some management oversight there but I mean obviously the management does not know better otherwise uh, In my opinion, we should move on from this one developer theory and always blame the upper management because they certainly get a higher salary. And if already getting the higher salary and managing it, then in my opinion, let's from now on blame the manager of management for not managing it better and not checking that and stuff. But um, yeah, anyway, that's it for today. I hope you learned something. Recurring senior stuff is mighty insecure, um, but raise your hand if you are surprised. If you have any thoughts and updates, leave in the comments below uh, tips and tricks for better security or what you would do differently. And uh, otherwise, I hope you learned something and to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.